Thank you again for tuning into my weekly video address. At the beginning of this month, I said that we're going to have a three-pronged approach to combating the surge here in Montgomery County, expanding testing, promoting vaccinations and boosters, and mitigating community spread of the virus. As we can see from our numbers this week, this approach is helping, but we must maintain commitment to this plan until we bring numbers back down. We are seeing reductions in both our test positivity and case rates. Our positivity is currently about 10 percentage points lower and case rates are down about 40% from our recent peaks during the current surge. Although these numbers are going in a better direction, they are still among the highest we have seen throughout the pandemic. And our case rate is over eight times higher than it was just a month ago. The bottom line is that we still have a long way to go just to get back to where we were just a very short time ago. The number of hospital beds being used by patients with COVID is also dropping. It is the lowest number it's been in two weeks, and it's welcome news for our hospitals and frontline healthcare workers. However, our hospital bed utilization is still six times higher than it was at the beginning of last month. Unfortunately, the number of COVID deaths per day is still increasing. However, with our county's high vaccination rate, we are continuing to see significantly fewer deaths than the state average. Montgomery County represents 17% of the state population, but we account for only about 8% of the deaths from COVID this month. This data point is one of the, those that matters the most, and it clearly shows how important it is to be vaccinated and boosted. We also continue to see disruptions from this surge of cases impacting on the operations and the education of our students. This week, MCPS announced that 16 more schools would be moving to virtual learning starting tomorrow until January 31st. I support these decisions being made by MCPS. They are in the best interest of the health and welfare of the students, staff, and families. We will continue to work with MCPS and help them to acquire more rapid tests. We've already provided 240,000 to them and are working with them regarding contact tracing following their request the other day. I also want to acknowledge the tremendous strain that this has on everyone involved in MCPS. The students, the staff, the families. The operational and health challenges are enormous and wearing. The one place where we can find some comfort is that this particular surge is temporary. When it will end is unclear, but I don't think we're talking about months now. We're talking about weeks to get out of the worst of it, assuming the virus doesn't have any more unpleasant surprises for us. But as we have for almost 23 months, we must continue to adapt, to collaborate, and to be patient and flexible during these unprecedented times for our schools. A rapid take-home test distribution has been a great success. We have distributed more than 792,000 kits to the public, including to MCPS, child care providers, community partners, at-risk populations, and more. And of that amount, we have given out over 303,000 tests directly to our residents at our county libraries in just over a week. Those are incredible numbers. In the first week since the launch of the portal to report tests, we've had over 900 residents report their test results. We want to continue to encourage residents to use this portal and please let us know when you test positive or in fact negative. It helps us to better understand and identify where this virus is spreading in our community. I'm also pleased that the federal government is mailing free at-home COVID tests now, and I encourage all Montgomery County residents to order these tests at www.covidtest.gov. Although we have ordered a lot of tests and are still waiting for about 60% of our shipments to arrive, we continue to discourage hoarding of rapid tests so everyone can get access to them. And utilizing all opportunities, such as this offer from the federal government, so that every Montgomery County home can have these tests on hand. This week, we announced that starting on Friday, January 21st, we'll begin giving away N95 masks at our libraries during rapid test distribution hours. Having these higher quality face masks as compared to simple face coverings drastically increases protection. Montgomery County residents can pick up free N95 masks at 19 county library branches beginning on Friday the 21st. Last week, CDC updated the mask guidance to emphasize protection to prevent the spread of COVID-19. N95, KN95, and KF94 respirators are masks that have been shown to provide higher levels of protection against COVID-19. Residents may pick up four ZYB 
Dash 11 masks, a brand of N95 mask per person at any one of the 19 county libraries beginning on Friday the 21st. Supplies are limited and the masks will be available on a first come first serve basis. We have these masks available on our stockpile because we planned ahead and I'm very thankful for HHS, emergency management and the procurement teams for their work. And I'm grateful to our libraries for ensuring this distribution system is safe, effective, and efficient, and equitable. I'm joining my fellow county executives and the Maryland Association of Counties in supporting the passage of a state bill, now before the General Assembly, that would make it a crime to threaten a public health official or hospital staff member. Our public health officials have been subjected to a lot of scary threats, abusive language, and that should not be tolerated. According to a recent study by CDC, 23.4% of public health workers surveyed reported feeling bullied, threatened, or harassed because of their work. Many of Montgomery County's own health officials have been regularly subject to threats and harassment. What doesn't make sense is the Maryland law provides protections for local elected officials like myself, making it a crime for residents to threaten or intimidate them or to otherwise impede their public responsibilities. However, Maryland does not extend these protections to other non-elected officials who perform administrative or oversight roles, but who may suffer the same sort of potentially dangerous feedback from irate residents. There's absolutely no excuse for anyone to intimidate them or to threaten them with violence. I hope this bill passes and for the sake not only of ensuring our civility and humanity, but for the peace of mind our healthcare heroes and their families deserve. I encourage you to support this bill as well. Last weekend, the world witnessed another terror event at a faith community when a British national took a rabbi and three other people hostage inside a Texas synagogue. Montgomery County stands in solidarity with the Jewish community and against this horrific incident, which took place during the Sabbath, a day of prayer, rest, and peace. We are grateful to law enforcement for the safe return of those who were held hostage and our thoughts go out to the members of the synagogue and our entire Jewish community. This incident has understandably shaken up our faith community and renewed concerns we have frequently seen over the past several years of terror attacks on houses of worship. This fear amongst our synagogues, mosques, temples, and churches is something that we take very seriously in Montgomery County. We're the only jurisdiction in the state that provides grant opportunities from our own coffers to help houses of worship afford increased security. The freedom of assembly is a sacred constitutional right and should be free from the fear of violence. Whether it's through the MCPD, our community engagement cluster, or regional service officers, we are here to support the safety of all our houses of worship. I want to make a comment on the passing of a friend of myself and a friend of the community, um, Tufail Hamad. Uh, we recently lost an incredible community leader. Tufail was a pillar in our community and a major presence in the Muslim community. I knew him for more than 20 years as a tireless leader for justice, as a gentle and compassionate human being that I've ever had the honor to work with. He saw us as all part of the same human family. He worked tirelessly for everyone in Montgomery County and never grew weary of striving to do more and better. Never once in all those years did he ever ask for anything for himself. I will miss him as a friend and a partner in the work to build a more just and understanding society. And Montgomery County will miss him as someone who always strove to be the best person he could be and was always willing to work to bring us all together. This week, I released my second full capital improvement budget. I am proud of my administration's achievements, which now allow us to leverage more state aids for school construction, address climate change, and promote economic development through substantial transportation investments. With increased investments in our schools, affordable housing, early care centers for our youngest children, facilities to address barriers to residents' well-being, and maintenance of core infrastructure, this CIP strengthens the resiliency of county government, our local economy, and the residents we serve. This is the first full Montgomery County CIP budget with recommendations developed under an equity lens framework. And that includes major efforts to address climate change, reduce greenhouse gas footprint, and improve resiliency. I want to thank our Office of Management and Budget, along with all our departments who worked very hard on this budget recommendation. 
I also appreciate the members of the Board of Education, the Montgomery County College Trustees, the Planning Board, WSSC Water, and HSC Commissioners for their contributions. I encourage you to look at our investments in this recommended capital budget, and it's on our website. I look forward to working with the County Council as we provide further recommendations relating to current revenue and other CIP initiatives that we'll provide once I finalize my final FY23 operating budget recommendations, which will be transmitted to the Council on March 15th. We have already had several significant snowfalls this month, with more snow on the way. I want to thank everyone on our snow team, and especially our snowplow drivers, clearing our roads in hazardous weather has always been a very difficult job in the best of circumstances, but with staffing shortages and challenges due to the pandemic, our Montgomery County Department of Transportation, Emergency Management, and all of our first responders are doing a great job dealing with this winter weather and keeping all of us safe. Please continue to monitor the weather, sign up for county text alerts, and be prepared with all the essentials that you may need in case you lose power. Thanks for listening. And I hope you have a great week.